Thank you all. Thank you all very, very much. What an honor. What an honor. This is so exciting. I have been watching Trump rallies from the very first one. And to be part of one, folks, I'll tell you, it's, it's the night of a lifetime. You know, if you're just backstage. You all are so great. This thing is it's electric in here, folks. You people at home. This is unreal. You know what? I am so hoping that in a few short minutes you start chanting something else. Maybe you'll do No? <laughs> I was just I was just talking to people backstage and, and somebody said that uh, the president and all of us have been labeled by some Democrats in the media divisive. That's divisive? The Democrats haven't even accepted they lost the election in 2016. That's what this is all about. It's serious stuff. All of this. I mean, for crying out loud, folks, you, know, you look at what happened the last two years. For two years ago, year and a half, every day, newspaper, every newspaper, New York Times, Washington Post, anonymous intelligence sources, confirming that Trump colluded with Putin to steal the election. There's no evidence for it. Zilch, zero, not it. It didn't happen. It was made up. Hillary Clinton colluded with Russia. Hillary Clinton rigged an election. These rallies, I have to tell you, they are the envy of official Washington. Do you realize there isn't a single elected official in either party who could do what this is tonight? Other than Donald Trump, there's no one. No one. And they're jealous. They are envious. This isn't supposed to happen. You people are supposed to love them, not Trump. They want to get in on it. Bill and Hillary Clinton and their national stadium tour. Talking about, have you seen Obama? He's been stumping down in Florida where I live. He's drawing crowds of 1,000 people, 2,000 people. Joe Biden can't fill a phone booth because he's looking for somebody to punch out. This is incredible. And you know, a little history, when I first started watching the campaign, I watched the president and his family come down the escalator in June of 2015, and I heard his opening remarks, and I said, this is, there's no way. And then I saw the first polls, and then I saw the first one of these, and I said, he's gonna win, because he has a connection. There is no other politician with a connection to voters like this. Nobody has it. And Washington can't stand it. I'm not kidding. The establishment cannot stand it at all. <laughs> now, folks, in, in, all, in all candor, you know, we, um, <clears throat> we're a nation great nation at risk in a dangerous world, and much of the risk that we face is internal. Well, you know, it, it's like they tell me that we're divisive and so forth, and they haven't accepted the fact that they lost the election. So now, let's take, look at the caravan just for an example. They think, they think that the president doesn't want the caravan, you don't want the caravan, because we're racist or sexist, not it at all. It's an issue of law. 
Why should we stand aside and let people break the law? They're, what's so hard about this? We just stand aside, let them violate the law? It is, it, it, we, we get all these labels thrown at us and we love our country and we want the best for everybody in it. We want the best for our kids and our grandkids. We want everybody to be great. We want everybody to experience the American dream. It was, you know, I'm from here, I'm from Cape Girardeau, and... and <laughs> it was... Now, don't take this wrong, but 50 years ago was the first time I was, I was 16, first time I was told that I wasn't good enough to succeed in radio. Now, what, don't, don't misunderstand, we're all told this. We all know how to fail. We don't need to go to the library to find books on how to fail because we all know how to do it. We don't, you'll, you'll never go to the library and find a book, Great Moderates in American History or Great Committees in American History. Donald Trump wants America to be great again. And it's not a slogan, it's an objective. And it is... <laughs> I love you all too. I really, this crowd is just. I asked the president if I could speak for 30 minutes. You know, I'm, I've got a 10 minute limit here. He said, no. He can't wait to come out and talk to you. It's, it's an amazing thing that Donald Trump has done. You know, Donald Trump doesn't need any of the grief that he gets. Donald Trump doesn't need any of Donald Trump could do and has done whatever he wants. He's one of the most successful people in America. And he doesn't need this. He doesn't need to put up with the abuse. He doesn't need to put up with the... But he does. He does because he sincerely believes that America is headed in the wrong track. And it needs to be put back on the right track. They say, they say we're divisive. They say we're divisive. But it's, we're not divisive, we're defending an America that is strayed from our founding. Nothing to do with race, nothing to do with gender, nothing to do with any of these identifies, identity politics labels, it has to do with culture. It has to do with protecting and defending the Constitution. It has, pure and simple. So I think it's, it's a wonderful thing that you've come out here tonight. I could not be more honored to be part of one of these rallies. You know, the bond, folks, I'm telling you, the bond that exists between you and everybody else that's been to a Trump rally is something that, that politicians envy and the people in Washington really haven't taken the time to understand why you voted for Trump. They just think you're stupid for doing so. <laughs> And there's so much to learn about why you have. There's so much to learn about the potential greatness for America to learn why you're here, why you support Trump. But they just chalk it up to the fact, well, you're not educated. Well, you're poor. Yeah, you're this or that. And you're angry. You're not angry. You love people. You want your country to be the greatest it can be. And you finally got somebody willing to help you do it. Somebody to stand up for you. Somebody to stand with you. We, in certain, are, are hanging by a thread. Do you realize, folks, there is nobody, I, don't, I should say nobody, there, 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 there are some on the Republican side who would attempt to do what the president's done, and done. But for the most part, there's nobody who would do what Donald Trump has done. Nobody would buck the system. Nobody would take it on. You, if, he, if he hadn't run... Who among anybody in politics could you have glommed onto to have this kind of chance to make America great again? There wasn't anybody that was actually standing for this. Everybody gets caught up in what's going on in Washington inside the establishment. You were being ignored. You weren't being listened to. You weren't being paid any attention to it. Even now, the real anger at Trump is actually aimed at you for having elected him. But he doesn't need this. He puts up with this, and thank God he does. Because, 
He's indefatigable. The man simply doesn't get tired. He doesn't wear out. For those of you, no, no, indefa- there's somebody from Rio Linda here. Indefatigable, he doesn't get tired. Just keeps going and so forth. Without any further ado, folks, thank you so much. It's been great. It's great to be here, be part of this. Raise the roof. Here he comes, the president of the United States, Donald J. Trump. Tomorrow, all the things were gone. Work for all my life. And I had to start again. Just my children and my wife Thank my lucky stars To be living here today Cause the flag still stands for freedom And they can't take that away And I'm proud to be an American Where at least I know I'm free And I won't forget Across the plains of Texas From sea to shining sea From Detroit down to Houston And New York to L.A. There's pride in every show-me heart And it's time we stand and say
very much, Missouri. You are incredible, incredible people. Wow. And we never said to Rush, he's got eight minutes. Rush can have two hours, three hours. There's nobody like him. There never has been anybody like him. I was speaking to Sean Hannity backstage. Do we love Sean, by the way? And Sean said, there is nobody like this man. And he's a real good guy. Although he's tough, he's tough. But boy, I'll tell you what, when he's on your side, there's nobody you want better. I mean, it's really great. It's really great when he's with you. The biggest of all time at what he does. I also want to thank my good friend, Lee Greenwood. How about Lee? So we were in Tennessee last night, and Lee was there. And I get that. But this was a surprise tonight. But you know, that song is one of the great songs. But when he's singing to you, like, direct, we really like that song, right? We really, and we like Lee Greenwood. And he's been with us from the beginning. He's been with us absolutely from the beginning. And while we're talking about incredible people, let's get it over with, right? So I have a few people that are right out here and they're very special. They've done an incredible job for us. They've been with us from the beginning also. I'm gonna start by saying, Sean Hannity, come on up, Sean Hannity. By the way, all those people in the back are fake news. <laughs> Mr. President, I, I did an opening monologue today and I had no idea you were going to invite me up here. And the one thing that has made and defined your presidency more than anything else, promises made, promises kept. Four and a half million new American jobs, 4.3 million Americans off food stamps, four million Americans out of poverty, and we're not dropping cash loads of cargo planes of cash to Iranian mullahs that chant death to America. Mr. President, thank you. mean at all to insult. Look at the size of the media back there. That's a lot of people. And you do have, honestly, I see some, you have some very fine people back there, but you have some that aren't so fine. But we don't, we don't want to insult, but I have to do this also because there's a woman on Saturday night that treats us very, very well. And she does it with love and with passion for the country. Not for me. It's not a passion for me. It's a passion for the country. And I really believe it's a passion for you because we've, we've together formed the single greatest political movement in the history of our country. She understands it. And she's understood it from day one, and she did this little show, and she was just gonna do it, a little fun, and then it became this tremendous success, and she has got viewership like you wouldn't believe, and she speaks from the heart. Her opening monologue is always exciting. It's always exciting, and it's always brilliant, and she's my friend, and she's your friend, Justice Janine. Thank you. Do you like the fact that we are now 
in the longest, strongest economic growth streak in American history. Do you like the, the fact that this man is the tip of the spear who goes out there every day and fights for us? he is making now, you've got to make sure you get out there tomorrow if you haven't voted yet. Everyone you know, your grandmother, your cousin, your kids, even your next door neighbor, if you don't like them, get them out to vote for Donald Trump and all, not the, all the people who are running for the Republican Party. We've got to have them be very careful with those stairs because she just did a great job, but we don't want her to fall going down those stairs because they will be decimated. 